Yeah. Uh, hi, all. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this person is basically uh, equity documentation and name is Swagger. How we can document it and API uh, in a fruitful way. So uh, there, first by the let me introduce myself. As few of them, uh, few of you are known about me. So I am Proshun Das, working in Planning Meet for almost seven years. During these days, I am worked on several projects and product. Uh, my primary skill sets are PHP and MySQL. Uh, so this session is basically about what is API, how, how we can develop an API with proper documentation. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, the topics are mainly include, I am covering few of them. There are lots of things over here, but within this 45 minutes, I can't be able to go include all those things. So some basic concept over there and uh, mainly few uh, open API specification using Swagger tools, I will cover in this uh, session. So first topic is what is an API? Second is purpose to use API then how an api works type of api type of api protocol api documentation swagger code and open api specification hands-on and bibliography given me conclusion so what is an api so uh, an application programming interface is a connection between computer or between computer programs so it is a type of software interface that offers a service to other pieces of software. So, and then, then an API you can uh, describe as is a set of functions that allows applications to access data and interact with uh, external software components, operating systems, or microservices like that. To simplify, an API delivers a user response to a system and sends the system response back to the user. So then it building applications and API uh, simplifies programming by abstracting the underlying implementation and only exposing object or actions the developer needs. Means if we take some example, then suppose one API is for input output file, um, might give the developer a function that copies a file from one location to another location. But, uh, to, but if we use a, a builder API for that, and if uh, a developer use that API, they don't need to know about the API, the coding itself. They just uh, need to uh, know about how they need to call that API. So there is some abstraction, data abstraction over there. So that's the things. The fourth point is a document or standard that describe how to build or use such a connection or interface is called an API specification. So purpose to use an API, what should be the purpose? There are too many purpose, but I am segregating mainly some of them. So uh, on one is improved collaboration. As I said, API is enable integration so that AP, any platform and apps can seamlessly communicate with each other. Without APIs, many interfaces would lack connectivity and would suffer for informational silos that compromise productivity and performance. Silos means, suppose there are many components, like uh, in our company, LOR, Frost, Quad, uh, Delivery, all, all of them there. But suppose one employee is working on LOR, specifically on LOR. Uh, so uh, he or she can't. Uh, uh, we work, he or she can't or, 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 or don't want to share those specific information with the others. So that's called information silo. So if they don't share those LOR related information with the other guys of another project, so there is some miscommunication or some uh, information not communicated throughout the company properly. So if we use API, so that kind of issue to some extent we can uh, rectify it, like information and silos. So easier. Next point is easier innovation. So API offer flexibility, allowing companies to make connection with new business partner, offer new services to their existing market, 
and ultimately access new market as well that can generate massive return like in any digital transformation for example so next point is data monetization like first many companies choose to offer api for free at least initially for some period so that they can uh, uh, build an audience of developer around their brand and forge relationship with potential business partner so by that way however if the api grant access to very valuable digital asset you can monetize it by selling access in future so there is some business requirement as well if we use api and those things so the fourth point is added security so if uh, create an added layer with api create an added layer as well you can you add some security authentication token over there uh, using some another uh, the token token system so we can protect our api as well as for our requirement so api create an added layer of protection between your data and the server developer can further strengthen their api security by using token signature pls encryption like that way by implementing api gateways to manage and authenticate traffic and by practicing effective api management so those are the four point main, mainly purpose why should we use api instead of normal code coding okay so how an api works so maybe all of uh, you guys know about this but i am just sharing uh, some slides over there so an api is a set of defined rules that explain how computers and application communicate with each other so api sits between an application and the web server acting as an intermediary layer that process data transfer between system so here how it works some steps so mainly four steps over there a client application initiate an api call to retrieve in information also known as a request this request is processed from an application to the web server via the uri api will from each of your uh and include a request verb means param header and sometimes request body if there is post call or put call sorry after this second second step is after receiving a valid request the api makes makes a call to the external program or web server where the code is written how it should be used then the server send a response to the api uh, with the requested information uh, after the process or, or all the process done then the api transfer the essence data to the ui means initial requesting applications to the user so the diagram basically like that a simple diagram very uh, uh, so hld kind of diagram high level diagram so browser uh, send request api is there some rules over there like post get put delete any kind of rules over there many auth should be some authentication over there if required then uh, communicate with server then server uh, then code of, uh, written over there and developer use database as well if they want to uh, you know, to communicate with their code so after that they return back their data to the api and api return back the data to the ui to the browser level receive the response as a, as we uh, uh, yeah, mentioned so there's the basic api flowchart concept then types of api so there are mainly four types of api uh, so don't confuse the type api protocol and api type types of api and types of api protocol two different things so api means how the api behaves so that's the type of api and protocol means how the api function functioned so that's the api protocol how so this is the api types so based on api type there is there should be four types of api so one is open public api another is partner api then private api then composite api so open public api means this api there is no authentication there is uh, uh maybe the maybe some authentication over there but most of them public api there is no authentication but some access key over there if we, we are using any third party public apis so access key secret key as you know over there so open public api or open source application programming interface you can access with the http protocol also known as public api they have defined api endpoints and request and response format partner api means uh, 
partner HIR's application programming interface exposed to or by strategic business partner. Typically, developer can access those API in self-service mode through a public API developer partner. Still, they will need to complete an onboarding process and get login to user to access partner API. Me, suppose I am working in HDR project or I am working in Pearson project or O'Reilly project. So maybe they are, uh, we are using some import export functionality. So suppose we are using some import functionality from their third party, from the client specific third party, third party API, using that client specific third party API data. So that called partner API. So they, uh, we need to go through a process and they need to add specific user from LN to their partner API, to their API, so that can, we can access their API. So that's called partner API. So then they will need to complete an onboarding process over there and get login after that. So that's called partner API. Then the private API. Private API means like LM internal API, as you said. Suppose some in, in our LM product, vanilla product like uh, Frost, Quad product, not project, in our LM product, they use internal LM API. So those are not shared with the other external guys, even not with the client. So those are only shared with the with our internal employees. So internal private APIs are uh, behave like that way. So internal private API are application programming interfaces that remain hidden for external user. These private APIs are not available for user outside of the company and are instead intended to improve productivity and communication across different internal development teams. So as I said, there are LOR. So we can use LOR in our first project as well in our quad. So internal communication is much more easier if we use API-based application. Then the composite API. Composite API means uh, in that API there are multiple endpoints. So suppose, uh, so actually composite API is used in many times in microservices. So combine multiple data or service APIs. So these services allow developer to access several endpoints in a single call. My composite API are useful for microservices architecture, where performing a single task may require information from several resources, means to hit multiple API at one time. So those API we can call at it as it is composite API, and we can use, uh, there are some individual function in our PHP as well, like multi-thread function, multi-thread call call, so as as we know in call we only add single endpoint but we can use multi thread call call that you can use multiple endpoint as well in an api so that is called composite api next is type of api protocol so that's i said this is protocol so may, there are many protocol uh, so i am just uh, four five protocol so i i am actually uh, mentioned over here only two apis which are most used Actually, nowadays only REST API is used mostly. SOAP is depreciated, uh, we can say like that way. Right? So simple object access protocol is an uh, API protocol built with XML. So enabling user to send and receive data through SMTP, we can use SMTP as well as HTTP as well as UDP. So with SOAP APIs, it is easier to share information between apps or software component that are running in different environment or written in different language. And representation state perform, uh, test uh, state transfer is, it is not a protocol because uh, SOAP is a protocol. So there is some predefined protocol. Uh, if a uh, request hit, then it, um, between request and response, there should be a predefined protocol we, between the re re request and response. But REST, REST, REST is not a protocol, it is a API architecture. So there are no, there is no predefined protocol for that. So which means there is no official standard, unlike those with the protocol. So REST provided, so it is a very flexible kind of uh, things. So REST provided relatively high level of flexibility and freedom for developer. This flexibility is just one reason of why REST APIs have emerged as a common method for connecting components and application in a microservice architecture. And REST support XML, JSON, HTML, text, all the things. Okay. So next is API documentation. So API documentation uh, means uh, API documentation is a technical content delivery event containing instruction about how to effectively use and integrate with an API. Means it's a concise, concise reference manual containing all the information required to work 
with the API or how how we can uh, use that API with details about the URL, what is what should be the endpoint and the path parameter over there, responses and more like a body over there, payload over there. So supported by description and example. Uh, so in that in our uh, documentation, we can use some description as well for that specific field why it should be used and use we can use some example as well what should be the format like that way as a, for the response as well as for the request we can use example for that as well so api documentation has traditionally been done using regular content creation in previous days and maintenance tools and text editor simple text editor so nowadays api document description format like like the open api specification swagger specification so so here is 2.0 version so now we are using open api 3.0 version so have automated the documentation process making it easier easier for team to generate and maintain them so we can say, verify the documentation and check the api in runtime as well after the create after creating the documentation so why document apis why need to document the apis what is the uh, need for that so among all the phases in the API lifecycle, documentation is probably the area showing the most growth. This is especially true with the tooling ecosystem around documentation. It's interesting to note this trend since documentation is traditionally something that developer paid little attention to when launching code. So they just prefer to code the APIs but don't prefer to document that as well. So why? So what should be the problem if they can't follow the documentation? That in fact it much easier to implement code that is it to write good documentation. But this is because of its direct impact on adoption and usage. So you can have the best functional product, like you can best code over there, best unit test over there, all the things over there. But no one will use if it if they can't don't know how to use it. So documentation is required. If client don't know or anybody don't know how to use the API, what should be the parameter? What should be the required ones? What should be the um, re uh, response format? Uh, what is the endpoint over there? So how they behave? So, so without the documentation, if there is very good code, though, it can't be used. So documentation is the, is the foundation for a good developer exercise experience. You can say that. Then Swagger tools. So Swagger tools means uh, Swagger is a set of open source tools built around the Open API specification, uh, as I said. So that can help design, build, document, and consume REST APIs. Swagger open source and Pro tools. There are some Swagger open source over there, and some uh, sorry professional tools as well have helped millions of API developer teams and organization develop deliver great APIs. So open tools are there, like those are free, like Swagger Editor over there, Swagger Code Chain, Swagger UI, and professional tools over there is for Swagger Hub, which is 14 days free trial. Then after that, you need, uh, you need to buy or maybe some uh, restriction over there uh, after two 14 days. So Swagger tools. Uh, we are mainly covering here two tools over there. One is Swagger Editor, which is free tool, and one is Swagger Hub, which is 14 days free trial. So Swagger Editor design, describe, and document your API on the fast open source editor, fully dedicated to open API based API. The Swagger Editor is an easy way to get started with the open API specification, formerly known as Swagger specification, with support for Swagger 2.0 and open API 3.0. So first there is one version Swagger 2.0. Now it is there is another version which is Open API 3.0 because former Swagger is converted to uh, Open API. So name name is so Swagger Hub. There is another portal which is 14 days Uh So in the, so this is actually used for enabling faster standardized API design work master through collaboration by adding members in an organization like Git. Uh, as we can add our user over there and we can build a team and then put those some user to that team and we can build an organization over there and put that teams over that organization so as like git there is same structure in uh, swagger hub as well so maybe some uh, flow is different but 
concept should be same. So more interactive API documentation than Swagger editor. Swagger editor only do one specific job, but here we can use many functionality over there, like features like publish. We can publish one API. We can unpublish again with, uh, that API. Version switching, like we can version that API. We can uh, we can go to the previous version as well. We can switch the version as well. So make API private public, as I said. Uh, we can uh, make the API private or as well public. Also, we can filter the APIs from the API listing page. So those some interactivity over there in Swagger Hub. But keep in mind, this is 14 days free So Open API specification, what is Open API specification? So Open API formerly known as Swagger specification. So is an API doc description format for REST APIs. So an open API file allows you to describe your entire API, including available endpoints like user slash user, some example, and operations on each endpoint like gate, post, or what should be the operation over there, what should be the endpoint over there, path over there, operation parameter, input parameter, output parameter for each operation, authentication method if required, Contact information, this the some metadata information like contact information, license, version, terms of use, title, and other information over there as well. We can put so API specification can be written in two format like YAML and JSON. So we can use any one of them. The format is easy to learn and readable to both humans and machine. Next, uh there are some screenshots over there how to write open API specification. So as you say, see that there and the line number two, there is a version. We need to uh, put the version over there. If it is swagger, then open instead of open API, we, we can put swagger and colon 2.0.0. But uh, in that tool, I can show you uh, there uh, there are some uh, interactive drop down over there. So we need to, each and every time we don't need to write the code over here as we did in our previous days so then the information like description version title contact license we can use url of that license server means the url we can use multiple url over there like for dev start means qa any type uh, production uh, so then uh, we can use path means after the url there should be a path of the api so we can use that path over there. Within the path, if there is any dynamic variable, we can use using second bracket under the second bracket curly braces. We can use that variable name over there, and we can use what should be the type of the API: gate, post, or put like that. Right? And then the summary of that API operation ID. We always need to put one operation ID over there because this is one kind of primary key. So we and the operation ID should be unique. For this entire for this entire uh, documentation, so keep in mind that this is being like a primary key operation ID, and then description, then parameters like uh, which are what are what should be the parameter in parameter there are uh, if we if the parameter is in the path itself like in the URL itself endpoint itself then the uh, as you can see in the thirty two number lines the key is in. So we need to provide path uh, as a val value in the in parameter. So that in in in, in parameter path value is path means that those variables should be used on that URL itself. But if you want to use in our uh, not in our URL but as a param, then what what should be the approach? So I am going to next slide. So then you need to add query as a value in the in parameter like in 48 number and 56 number line so like here is the pagination parameter over there page number item per page we can use description over there as well required is this required or optional schema over there leak like this is integer or string or minimum value should be one or maximum value should be so you can put those things over there and also we can use header as well, like if you want to use in header cookie value, cookie value over there. So as a para, we can use header as a in value 
uh, and name we can use any kind of name i i uh, add over here as a cookie and this uh, value should be string so type should be string in line number 65 to 69 so then there is a responses so what should be the response what should be the if there is 200 response or if there is 400 404 four response or 500 response then what should be the description of that error or what should be the success message so those we can add over there like using description content format like that way and if you see that in line number 78 there is a items over there and we create we can create components as well within our open api specification why the component we can use because uh, component behave like a functions in our code so if is rather we uh, writing same like 10 or 20 lines of code each and every time we can just create and components and in that component we can write that 10 20 or 10 line of code and then we just using dollar ref we can uh, use that uh, component anywhere we want but keep in mind uh, in a suitable format not anywhere means that way so so like that we are using say in the 70 we are calling the assessment data component over the 78 number line so where i read write the assessment data as you see that in 85 number line first in 83 number line we need to write components then schemas over there what should be the schemas first then the name of the schemas there may be multiple components over there so first there is assessment data so what should be the type of that data so that is object then required field in that items means this is the output so in the output what should be required field in the output maybe some field is not required some field is in some api those field value is not required but in some but some field value is always required on that field in the output so what should be the required value we can use like that way 87 number line and 88 89 so keep in mind this space in 88 and 89 number line you have to give this space after hyphen and then the uh, the json uh, output value like data status message error like those so yeah after the hyphen you have to put the space over there so in the next slide like message error over there then the properties what should be property of the status what should be like this it should be integer as i said we can give example as well so there is one key called example so uh, as so it may be 400 it may be 200 so i am just give, giving one example over here which is a 200 this is one example not the uh, exact uh, output this is the example uh, within the documentation so next you can say that in 98 number line we are just nested in the component we are using another component so component we have in a nested structure so within a component we can create another component as well so like that one so we can create two components over here one is question list one component over here and under the question list in 107 number line we again nested and create another component like question data so as you if your output is three tire uh, three tire architecture or three layer like one layer within that another layer then another layer then we can control that by dividing that within a component and uh, using dollar ref you can declare those again and again under your specific component so like that way as i did over here so uh, question list and then under question list there is question data so and then in this question data what should be the type what should be the property what should be the key over there like in our question data there should be id id is required there should be title there should be maybe some uh question type in css like that way so those should be mentioned on these properties okay so this is another api the previous api is as you said this one is the gate api so the here here is no payload over there because it is a gate api but if you need to use payload over here means if, if the api is post api then we can use like that in the fourth uh, screenshot for that they, this is a login api so uh, we can use another parameter like request body so request body is a uh, that key which is uh, uh, used for payload so over here we can use first we can use we need to use the content type means if you use postman then you, you, you should know that we have to put the content type like 
from data or application JSON or a from a URL encoder. So those things. So in 29 number line, you have to put the content type, then the schema and the properties. What should be properties? So in the login, we have to put two fields only, username and password. So you can put over there 33 and 35 number line and the type. Type means for username, their type should be string and password, their type should be string as well. But password should be as a password format. So format should be password. So keep in mind that type, there is no password type over there. There is always one type, string type. But you can control using the format, that format is password. But you cannot directly put type, type value as password. So those things over there. There is some documentation, well organized documentation uh, available over the net in the Swagger website itself. Uh, you can uh, check over there and using that, uh, you can build. I am also using that and building our API. So all the things over mention over there. So nothing don't uh, to worry over for this. So then the responses, as I said, the response schema the content time in 46 number line application json so this response uh, format is content type is application json so but there and also i used component over here like login data and 404 means not found all the types over there so for 200 there is a component which is type is array in that get api you can see that type was object but here the type is array as per our uh, implementation in the code so we are giving the output is array so the reference type is array. So in the next page, the login data, how the login, how should be the login data? So as you see that uh, in 59 number line, login data type is object is and in the login data there is an object. So entire is array, but in within the array there's there is an object. So type is object and there should be four value like status data message error. So those are required properties of that those four. And then again, as I said, nested component. So that is user data. And in user data, there is another one nested component. Uh, uh, no, sorry. Uh, there is only one nested component, like in 72. Uh, and uh, in the user data component, you can see there is three uh, field is required, like ID, email, username. In the output field, so ID is integer, email is string. As I said, there is no email type, as like there is no password type. But you can put format as email or password. So you can put in the 93 number line, you can put format as email. Okay. So example, you can give example as well. If anyone can't able to understand what should be the format, so you can put one example over there. Then they can as a, use that example as a reference to uh, run that API or to understand the API. So like that way you can use. So screenshot are all the codes that uh, things are done so if you want we can give some hands-on like two or three minutes hands-on if you want so i am just uh, stop my screen over here and just uh, sharing another screen so just give me one minute
high pressure, you are on mute. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So I am uh, telling again. So yes, uh, this is a this is Swagger editor. Uh, from here, you can just write the document and then uh, previewing over here in the right side. But Swagger Hub is more. This is this one is Swagger Hub. So it is more interactive than Swagger editor because here we can use uh we can pu public make the api private or public we can publish unpublished api we can use versioning as well we can save in another version as well over there so this is more interactive than swagger editor but we can use swagger editor as well okay so here as you see that there is two url over there so if i if we don't want dev api over there we only want qa or sat api so we can comment as well over here and uh yes and if you do anything wrong over here there is some message over here just duplicate mapping key so 15 number line so maybe you need to comment this thing as well so like that way you need to comment all the things because as you comment you are you have to comment the description as well else this seems that a url is one but description is two so they're just giving duplicate like that if i uncomment this they give duplicate mapping key because description is already there so why another description so you can comment it and then you can see there is only one so runtimely in runtime you can check your documentation over here and also you can try it out as well over here like if you want to try it out click on try it out you can put your username password over here execute over here and you can see this code over here as we did in our postman but in postman we can do the documentation like that way but here we can do the documentation as well so like that way also in in uh, in the responses there should be some example as those are example value those things are example value why those things are example value how we put those example value you can see that in response those this is the response there is login data so in the login data there should be user data in the user data component uh, user data and in the uh, user data component user data component there should be some example like example one for uh, id for email example prashundas so if you see that this is one this is email prashundas so this is the example schema so using that example schema uh, people understand what should be the responses after clicking the original one so this should be the example one and this is the original one which is i just try it out so i model some maybe value is different but format should be same so we need to keep in mind that format should be same here should be many different values like id tenant id email username first name last name those are original value but in my example there is only id email username because i don't add another value if i want to add any another value like if I want to add uh, uh, six, then six is original value. There is six, but in our example, there is no six uh, uh, param, uh, key over here. So how we can add? So just copy over from here. You can see. Paste over here. Then now the, the key is six, and type should be string or example mail. Okay. So like that way, if you take now the example, then you can see this. And if you change the example, then if you can do it, then you can see that change over here, six mil. So this is the example value. You can add another value like first name, last name over here, because in original, there is first name. So because all this value is not there, but I just uh, make, make some demo to demo, uh, I am just using uh, creating this document for demoing purpose. So it is not a foolproof API, but uh, as I said, that you can add extra param, extra thing as well with compare compared to your original output. So like that. Way. You can use enum as well as a type, I think. Uh, so uh, just a minute. Uh, Maybe in my another API, I used enum over there. 
because uh, as a gender male female so we can use email uh, in a measure so yeah as you see that here i give type as a cookie so cookie is not a type so if you give cookie as a type by mistakenly then they just validate that cookie is the type should be this array boolean integer number object string so all the things over there you just need to change over there and then you can see that the validation uh, the documentation is valid so here you can if you check there should be an enum value over there uh just checking like this one so suppose uh your question has some type but type means there should be some specific type as like gender as you see in the login so you have to put that you can put a, as a you can you can't put type as enum as i said you can't put password email as a type there is only one type string string array like you said integer but you can put for uh, password email you can put as a format password format like for this format in 32 so format password format email and for enum you just need to another new key like enum called enum and you can put mcq fib like that way so so uh, in your example uh, there is no example but if you use this so uh, that means in your property there or there is only two values allowed like mcq and fib if you want a next uh, like matching ordering another value then we can put it's uh, another one like that over here yeah okay so that's the uh, hands on uh, most of little bit hands on over here so i am just stopping my screen over here and sharing the back to the slide slider just a minute yeah uh hope i am not mute again no okay so so next is uh bibliography here all the resources from where i we, we uh, i build this documentation so uh, and also some restriction because in swagger you can't use so there is some limitation over there over as well so those links over there you can click on them and then see the limitation over here the documentation details from where you find those in a stroke formatting things, the component things, example things, request body, how to create. So all those documentation, open API specification are available throughout the net in Swagger website itself. So those things over here, then q and around. So we are almost on the time, one minute over, but uh, you can ask, we can keep five minutes more for q and around if anybody wants so make unmute yourself and if i can uh, i know the answer i will surely give you and if anyone other know the answer they can also jump in and uh, give the answer as well yeah. anybody want any question uh, have any question then please ask hello Uh, Prasun, there is a one question to us from my side mm -hmm. because this is an example so you can uh, we can use to create a swagger for our APIs, right? Mm -hmm. But is there any tool for the Laravel to automatically create uh, the swagger code itself? Is there any tool? Because this example is okay, uh, mm -hmm. we can uh, because uh, what to one to one uh, gate API, post API, put API. It is habit habitual. We can write a code, but sometimes the parameter or the responses are more. It's it's take a time to write such a code. Okay, hmm. sometimes not always for the yeah. bigger APIs or sometimes some APIs are used for the many scenarios. If and else case are there, that time the responses are more and we need to write some code for that. Hmm. So, is there any tool in the Laravel to generate that Swagger code automatically? Yeah, I think a PHP SDK over here and Laravel SDK also over here, but I uh, can't even used. Uh, so I am not sure, but I am sure that there should be some SDK PHP SDK over there. 
so we can use those uh so uh, you need to take uh, you need to uh, take some do some little bit google and then check if we can use uh, those and in our project project uh, 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 let me answer this question am uh, yes uh, there is a, a package available in laravel to create this uh, swagger documentation uh, basically you, you you have to uh, uh, add some uh, comments uh, inside the controller uh, controller so uh, there are some specifications which you need to follow in order to create uh, and use this uh, package inside laravel okay and dinesh could you please provide the link to amai uh, then it would be very helpful to him uh, yes yes uh, just give me uh, give me uh, yeah not uh, now not now after the call so yeah uh, our people are using uh, this for the documentation kaushik has also created some documentation using that package uh, so i will share with you amai amai okay. and all the details okay yes thank you that's very helpful yeah thanks amai for the for it is very good question yeah anything else anyone i am also not very expert <laughs> of swagger things but uh, trying to you know, be thanks dinesh for your answer for your suggestion anyone else any uh, question uh, very can no person else we can end the call uh, Let's do it for one minute more. Yeah, so uh, we can uh, close the Q and A session. Uh, there is only one question. But it's a very good question. So next, uh, uh, the last slide is uh, as I always said. Because I want to conclude this session once again by saying a big thank you. Uh, thanks to all. This is a very interactive session. I want I want to do it very interactive, but it's not always within that time. We can't do it too much interactive because uh, then. So I am just uh, keeping one Q and A round for that only. So yeah. So uh, hope it's goal goes well, and maybe some of you, if don't ever about swagger, they are from now they are able to use those swagger things, and it's not that uh, tough uh, to write that code if you follow the open API specification from the internet, and it is a good habit to do all this uh, documentation during your API. Uh, implementation yeah so thank you that's all thank you so i am stopping my screen uh, and uh pia are you there uh hello pia yeah she left yeah so you better stop the record so i am stopping stop the recording